and these are all the books that I read in December. I read 10 books in December and I'm pretty proud of myself. I think that's fine. I spent a lot of time with my family over the holidays, so I didn't get a lot of reading done during that time. So I think 10 books is pretty good. I read one nonfiction. I read three classics. I read four mystery, one graphic novel, and one sci-fi. Before we dive in to the books that I read, I want to reach back here to our booktuber shout out book, and we're going to shout out somebody randomly. Today's shout out goes to Moments of Sanctuary. I will leave a link to their channel down below, so be sure to go over and subscribe to them. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel. It really does help me out. And of course, please do give this video a big like if you are enjoying my content. So first of all, the four mysteries that I read in December were The Boomerang Clue, also published as Why Didn't They Ask Evans? at Bertram's Hotel, Murder at Hazelmore, which I think is also published as The Sitterford Mystery, and After the Funeral, which is also published as Funerals Are Fatal. These Agatha Christie books, man. Most of them have two titles and it's driving me crazy, but I think some of these, I've finally got it figured out and I know what the double titles are. I have already done other review videos of all my Agatha Christie reading, so I will leave links to those up above and down below so you can see all my thoughts about the Agatha Christie books that I read in December. The reason I read so many in December is because I got really behind with my Agatha Christie challenge to read 12 Agatha Christie in 2021. And so at the end of the year, I was trying to catch up and read those last few books. It actually worked out perfectly though because it allowed me to participate in the Cloak and Dagger Readathon. Some of the prompts for the readathon were to read a um, book with a bilingual detective, and so that was Funerals Are Fatal. And another prompt was to read a book with a private detective, and I actually just doubled up on this prompt because Funerals Are Fatal has Hercule Poirot, and he's both a bilingual detective and a private detective, and so I just made that count for both prompts. Another one was to read a book with an amateur sleuth, and I read At Bertram's Hotel with Miss Marple, an amateur sleuth. Another prompt was to read a book that is set in a different country, and so I read Murder at Hazelmore, or The Sidiford Mystery, which is set in Dartmoor. And another prompt was to watch an episode of a mystery TV show, and I actually watched several episodes of Poirot. I watched a few episodes from season six. I watched Hickory Dickory Dock, I also watched Murder on the Links, and I watched, let me see, oh, I watched several episodes from the very last season of Monk, and I finished out watching Monk as well. Both of those TV shows, Poirot and Monk, are ones that I have already re-watched and re-watched several times. I think Monk, this is probably my fifth or sixth time re-watching through the whole series, and Poirot, I think this is my third time. So I love going back to those and watching them again and again. Because I did six of the prompts in the Cloak and Dagger readathon, that puts me at police inspector level. It was a lot of fun being able to participate in that, and it kind of gave me that extra little bit of excitement that I needed to help me get through some of those Agatha Christie books. I also finished reading Mujercitas, which is Little Women in Spanish. I started reading it and then I actually just ended up listening to an audiobook and I really enjoyed revisiting one of these favorite classics in Spanish. I just love the sisters Beth and Amy and Joe and Meg. They are such sweet characters and I never get tired of reading about their little adventures. The free audiobook that I listened to I thought was a really good translation and I really liked the narrator's voice the woman narrator, she really spoke very clearly and sort of slowly, so it'd be very easy to understand even if Spanish is your second language like me. It was so much fun just kind of rediscovering these characters again in a new language. It was almost like reading it again for the first time in a way. I always give little women five stars. I also read Live Not By Lies, a manual for Christian dissidents. This book exposes the lies of the political left and communism and socialism. It talks about the history of socialism and how it never works. <laughs> and it just raises the alarm about the dangers of totalitarianism in our modern world today. I found this a little bit disturbing because the history is very violent. If you know anything about the history of communist countries, it's really, really sad. And it's frightening to think that what happened in communist Russia and China could happen in my own country because people are ignorant about the truth of the history of socialism. The powerful writing style really hits your emotions in this one. And 
it includes true stories from families who actually lived under totalitarian governments. And they suffered terrible persecution and imprisonment. But this book also gives the reader hope and practical advice on how to stand up for the truth every day. My favorite part of this book was about a family who detailed how they prepared their children to, for life under a socialist regime. And they read Tolkien's Lord of the Rings to their kids to kind of inspire them to fight for what is right and good. I received a copy of this book from the publisher in exchange for a free and honest review. And I gave this book five stars. I also read the last book in War of the Realms trilogy. This is a sci-fi trilogy and I loved it so much. It has a really intricate plot with a lot of different characters, a lot of different political intrigue and adventure and battles. And I also really love the spiritual themes in this trilogy. There's so much depth as the characters have to face these really difficult spiritual decisions. The writing style is really powerful and it just grabs your attention and tugs at your heart. I gave this book four stars. I also reread Christmas with Anne by Ellen Montgomery. These are a collection of short stories all about Christmas and some of them feature Anne Shirley. These are really sappy and just, <laughs> and they're kind of cutesy and silly, but if you're in the mood for something really emotional and just like overly adorable, then these are, these are lovely. You kind of just have to be in the mood for them though. Otherwise they're like too sweetsy, you know? I gave this collection of short stories three stars. And I also reread a favorite childhood book of mine, Knock Three Times by Marion St. John Webb. This is about two children who are swept away into a magical world and they have to defeat the evil gray pumpkin. I just love the magic and the fantasy and the characters and I love rereading it every time. The whole world is just full of magic and enchantment and adventure. And every person that Molly and Jack meet through their adventures, every person is so memorable and, and different. The writing style is really excellent. There's such a great balance of funny and serious scenes. The adventure is really full of suspense, but there are a lot of really hilarious parts too. This book is just such a delight. I always give it five stars every time that I reread it. And I also read the next volume in the Castle in the Stars graphic novel series. I read A Frenchman on Mars. I have really been enjoying this graphic novel series the artwork is so beautiful, the adventure is so interesting, the world building on these other planets and Mars, and like, it's kind of like science fiction meets magic meets historical. It's really, really an interesting kind of just mush, a big mush of cool things. I loved it so much and I gave it five stars. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what are some of your favorite books that you read in December. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right books in the right hands at the right time can change the world.